It's time for Quarantine Cabaret Cocktails with Robert Bannon and Lee Lessig. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Lee, we can't unmute. We're live. Hi, everybody. How are you? Yeah, it moves me. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Oh my goodness. Am I excited? Week 17. 17 weeks of this 17. show. And what a show it is. Crazy, huh? Thank you to everyone who watched last week's Sideshow Reunion. Oh, that was epic. epic. We've never had more people on the screen. We had never. 10 people on the screen. It was crazy. Lee's computer was breaking down with all the technical things he does. He's literally a, a nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for Technical <laughs> Director. He's now literally a technical director. <laughs> no, I, we had 10 people on the screen and my computer froze We had four 20, times. 20, so the first time I texted Robert, I'm like, you need to log into the actual studio because I have to restart my computer. And then it happened three more times. But it was really nice for all the people that watched and thank you hello to all the new people that are here because we have one heck of a show this week. Cheers. Cheers. We are so excited. We have the legendary Cheetah Rivera tonight and her daughter, Tony nominee, Lisa Mordente. We have a special co-host, Michael Orland from American Idol, who is my very first musical director back in 1990. And, um, I was and he's with us. And we're so excited. And also my friend, Sean Ryan, who is the founder of Young Actors Theater Camp, which is an incredible, incredible uh, summer and winter camp uh, for theater lovers. And um, it's just fantastic. I, I taught there last summer for the first time and I loved it. So yes, okay. Well, I don't want to waste any time. I don't no, know about I'm you, Robert, but either. I don't want to waste any time at all. I don't have all. anything to say. You what? I have nothing new to say. I'm ready. Bring it, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, every week, you know, for the past uh, several weeks, I think 12 or 13 weeks, um, we've been um, uh, doing a, a, a little segment called the In Good Company Reunion. Because 15 years ago, which is hard to believe, it's hard to believe that I could have recorded an album when I was only 22. Now, 15 years ago, I recorded this duets album. Uh, it was the 10 year anniversary of, of my record label. And honestly, I just wanted to do a project that would sell more copies than my previous three recordings. Yeah. So I thought I'm gonna do a duets album and I'm going to invite other artists that are more famous than me, which is like a wide open playing field. And um, it was such a great experience. And I recorded with just the best of the best, Maureen McGovern and Stephen Schwartz and Ken Page and Susan Egan and Anne Hampton Calloway. And it was just a, a, a wonderful process. And one of the people that I asked to join me was Amanda McBroom, who um, won a Golden Globe for writing the theme song to the Bette Midler film, The Rose, called The Rose. And um, so um, we have been, I've been doing little interviews, like a couple minute interviews with each of these artists and we've been premiering them here on Thursday. And then on Friday, we drop it on the social media with a link so people can hear the song. And um, as um, technology would have it, our due to Wi-Fi issues, our interview didn't record properly. And so Amanda's gonna just pop on, we're gonna just do it live. How about that, right? Her, she was our first guest i know on so, this show well she's back here we and go back some say love it Hi. is a river that drowns the tender reed some say love hi amanda hi lee how are you? How I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. So I just want to say having first of all, you gifting me with the opportunity to sing the rose as a duet is like one of the greatest gifts ever. I am so um I just love 
that we had that opportunity. Obviously, it's a, a favorite song of mine, as it is millions of other people, um, and it just it just meant the world to me. And so I I I want to publicly thank you for 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 that gift, honey. Thank you for A, for asking me, and B, when you finally sent me the CD a week ago <laughs> and I got a chance to listen to us officially 20 years later, our harmonies, it's the best ever harmony. Oh. Um, your, voice is, your voice is just so beautiful anyway, but I was kept thinking, whoa, are we blending? And whoa, is this a new, it became a whole new song with Johnny's arrangement and the two of us singing it. I was knocked out listening to it. Thank well, you. thank you. You know, I just want you to share with our audience because I just love this story. You were driving home to your house in Ojai, California, and the these lyrics just came to you. You just channeled them, and like ten minutes, you wrote this song. Well, it was actually seventeen minutes, and I wasn't <laughs> a songwriter at the time. I was an actress at the time, and it's just something that happened. It's one of those things that happen in your life when somebody puts up a hand and says, your life is now gonna turn left. And my life turned left when that song happened. And I found the, the piece of paper that I wrote it on not too long ago and I was cleaning out my desk and I realized I wrote it in 15 minutes and I changed one word. Wow, wow, amazing, amazing. Well, you are a treasure. I have been, I was a huge fan of yours, um, not only as a songwriter, but as, um, as a vocalist, you're one of the greatest interpreter, lyric interpreters on the planet. Um, if, and if, if, when we are performing again, if Amanda is in your city, I urge you to go because she literally is one of the best uh, song interpreters that I've ever heard. So there you go. And did you freeze? Are you here? I think she froze. So I love you. I'm so thrilled that we did this song together. And tomorrow we will uh, post it on social media with links so people can listen. Bye. Becomes the room. Oh. <laughs> You're eating a hoagie. That makes me so happy. A hoagie. You're so Philly, Lee. I'm so Philly. And you, we call it. We call it a hero. You well, are my hero. You know, um, when we started doing these in good company uh, reunion segments, after each week after the video, Robert is eating a different food group. <laughs> Even carbs some weeks. Even like, carbs. I know. It's crazy. Cheat meal Thursday. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I don't want to waste any time because nope. we have such a jam-packed show today. And we have a very special co-host. Our friend. Our very dear friend. Yes, Mr. Michael Orland. Here he comes. Robert, I can't believe you're eating a, a grinder. We call him a grinder from Massachusetts. Oh my goodness. A grinder, a hoagie. Where are you guys from? I'm originally from my mother. <laughs> I can't get in the middle. Oh, there it is. I, I'm from Philly and he's from Boston. Massachusetts. I'm, and I'm Jersey all day. It's a hero. Oh my God, what a hero. <laughs> it's, it's, Lee, I love Amanda in the room too. God, I love that woman. Oh my God. Oh God, I've been the best. for a couple of times. We did a thing in San Francisco and she's, oh my God, she's just. I remember when I was, you know, asking people to do this project with me, I asked her and um, and she said, sure, what do you want to sing? And I, I would have never asked if I could record like her biggest hit. I just said, I, I was like open and she said, why don't we do a duet of the rose? We've never done that before. And I was like, oh, okay. Isn't okay. that crazy? Everybody, yeah. 
um, Michael Orland has played and done every television show, played with every singer oh. imaginable. You I know. used to watch him on the Dinah Shore show. Remember when I was on that back way back in the day? <laughs> I remember I was on that with Lisa, uh, with Liza and Cheetah. I'm kidding, I wasn't. Do you know Michael Orland? I met Michael at the Rose Tattoo, That's which right. was a very popular haunt cabaret in West Hollywood on Robertson. It's no That's longer right. there. It was in like the basement. The it was huh? the greatest. It was the, the best. greatest back then. The best. I met him there in 1990. I went to. I was working for Henry Winkler as his assistant, right. and someone told me, you know, you should. They have this open mic night, so I went. And Michael was playing, and I got up and sang, you know. And Linda Gerard, who owned the club or managed the club, um, after I sang, came over to me and she said, and she was like a chain smoker. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't she like. Um, Streisand's cover in Funny Girl. Understudy, or yeah, she was there. Understudy. understudy, Funny Girl, yeah. And she came up to me and she said, "How would you like to do a show?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, okay, what okay. show?" And she was like, "Your show." And I'm like, "I don't, <laughs> I don't have a show." She said, "Call Michael," and I called Michael, and we put together my very first show in 1990. Say, you, couldn't, you couldn't text me because there was no such thing no. as texting back then. No, I called you. Yeah, you called like my home phone. <laughs> attached to the wall. Attached I don't even think I don't even think I had email then. I don't think we did no. either. No. I don't think we did either. Well I but then we did that album and, and we did the show and then in 95 yep. Michael um co-produced my first album. He did all the arrangements crazy crazy and i loved it it was so much fun god i look back at that like all those days as such amazing Do you remember memory. that was like analog like when they would yeah. edit they had to like that's, splice that's the tape, tape. yes it's crazy it is crazy well i i have known michael for a couple of years we met through i don't know i don't even know how but i know michael's got family in jersey i talked to michael and michael was going to be my music director and play for me with my la debut and then corona happened here, fun fact, I've never met either of them in person. In person. Isn't that never, funny? Never met Michael or Lee in person. And now you're on a Michael and Lee sandwich right now. <laughs> and I, am the, I am the middle. I'm the middle of this hoagie a grinder. I love it. I'm right. in the middle. I love it. I love it. Well, so, that's so nice that you asked me to co-host. I was like, you guys are already amazing hosts yourselves. Well, you? you came on the week we had... Diana DeGarmo and Ace Young from American oh, Idol. Oh, oh my God. And you, were, you were our surprise guest because I wanted to surprise them. And you're just the best. You're so fun and you're funny and you're in the moment. And I was like, you have to come back. And you have yes. to, oh my God. I just oh like, God, Broadway my... World called me hysterical. Was yes, that they, they did. did. The called me. They did. Hysterical, yeah. Michael Orlin. You're so they funny. Did. I was like, usually they say, oh, he's a good pianist and he's really funny. But now they say he's funny and oh, and he can play too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll too take funny. it. I'm so, too Michael. Close. Am I too close to the camera? No, you're no, you're no, you're well, you're, now you are. I don't want you to see my Botox track. <laughs> That's, I need some. Are they doing that again? No, I don't know. I haven't done it. I've never done it. And I'm lying. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm lying. So Michael. <laughs> Michael. Yes. I was just thinking about this yesterday and mm -hmm. on my debut album, I recorded yeah. a song that you wrote with our dear friend, Andrea Markham. Who oh, I have not seen in forever and I love her so much. I do too. I actually reunited with her like a year ago because um, she walked into one of my flywheel spin classes on Larchmont, oh. and I was like, "What are you doing here?" And so I got to see her. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And see if I could only work out a little bit, I would. Um, you know, I would. <laughs> you would see me. I, I would have had a reunion with her a year earlier. You, would have. you know, I'm a little injured right now, so I can't Hello, do. Michael. Whatever. Hello. It's a, it's a lot. I want to make up a better story than I fell running with my dog because I was. Can you so play the piano? <laughs> So hand I, you wrote this song <laughs> called Falling that I love so much. And I revisited it 
just oh because God. you were going to be on the show. And I did have to completely relearn the lyrics because it's of been course. a course. lot of 1995. That's a lot of only 25 years ago. Yeah, I know. I don't even remember what day it is. So, you know, but and I've I have never performed on this show ever, but I I love this song so much. Can we try and I see like would love to try. Should we try? Let's just do like a little cut version. I don't know if do it's it. gonna work or not, but we are gonna try. Robert, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you backstage for a moment. Ooh. It's oh, just I you and me, Michael, just like old times, right? I'm telling you. Okay, so let me see. There's so many controls to do. Let's see if this works. How's that? Perfect. Yeah, you sound good. Used to be I would close my eyes and hope that love would catch me. No more second guessing now you're gonna have to ask me. The view seems very clear, the ground seems awfully near, but sometimes things are not what they appear to be. Time and time again, I'd hand over my strongest emotions. Then I take a leap that went much deeper than the ocean. Can't do it anymore. It's time to come ashore. Won't let it be the way it was before this time but i can see over the edge and i'm starting to feel like i'm falling till i hear from you my sensibilities are calling i can see over the edge and i'm starting to feel like i'm falling falling all that I need for you to do is tell me that you feel like you're falling to have no fear. I'll be here. And I promise that my love will catch you. I can see over the edge and I'm starting to feel like I'm falling till I hear from you. My sensibilities are calling. I can see over the edge and I'm starting to feel like I'm Falling, falling, falling in love with you. Ooh, with you. Beautiful. That was so oh nice. Oh my gosh. Um, I, you know, I haven't heard that song in so long. Hey, guess what? What? Look who's here. Oh, <laughs> Andrea. Hey, that was beautiful. Thank it really you. was. I'm, awesome. I'm like, honestly, a little bit emotional. <laughs> honestly, it's a, it's, it was back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was back in the day. It was but back we, in the I day. I just remember though, we wrote that song for you. I mean, you sang that song, right? Didn't you sing it? And then Lee heard I it. Think I think I did. Yeah. I, re I remember writing it with you in whatever apartment, like funny? however long ago those apartments were. Oh. But, uh... <laughs> well, it's, it's beautiful. You can stream it. Lee's albums are available to stream. 
That's right. That's right. Um, wow. Uh, this has been like, just listening to all of this has been so nostalgic because my life's so different now. And every now and then I bump into people who say, how's the singing? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you mean how were the 90s? I can hardly remember, but... <laughs> It's a whole different world. It. Well, it is a whole. You have world. gone on to become like this incredible yoga master. Well, you've written a I book. I don't like the word master, master, but thank you. Master. Uh, <laughs> you've written a book. You teach all over the world. It's amazing. Thank you. I, I yeah. feel very grateful. I, I stumbled into it. Um, you know, round. I started into stumbled into yoga on my own around the time that we were doing this, and it was this sort of like nothing's ever enough loop that I was in and I did this yoga class at Crunch Gym and I hated every second of it. And I knew that either I needed to never go back again or that this was something for me to look at. And wow. it was a pivotal moment for me. And, um, you know, I still have the nothing is ever enough a little in the background, but it's helped me. Don't we all? I think we do. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's, it's so good to see you, Andrea. Great. And Great I think you. you you and the, the husband have to come over for a socially distanced little pool rosé hang any weekend. Would love it. We're open every weekend. Okay. <laughs> I Michael, wanna, I'm, I'm so excited. Please well, do. Well, of course you're going to so come, Michael. I'm so excited to see you. I'm so happy to see you. I only get, I get, I'm on your email list, so I, I know everything you're up to. And of course, you know, <laughs> I follow you on the anti-social media. <laughs> right. Well, I've been... I've been following all of what you've been up to. I mean, really, when we think about this trajectory of when we all started it at the Rose Tattoo, which was another thing, like, I get, I got misty because I forgot yeah. a little bit, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then, like, what everybody's done and... Um, crazy. You know, it, it's crazy. And then, and then these crazy times and what it uh. makes us reflect upon and how we're doing this because we probably wouldn't be doing this mm. if mm -hmm. we weren't in, in the situation that we're in right now, which right. is kind of a contemplative pause, right? A little bit of yoga yeah. for us all. Yeah, we call yeah. it a CP. We call it a CP, a contemplative pause. A CP. CP. So um, I want to talk for a moment. Um, okay. Because um, we have another guest coming on that I get it. literally, when this pandemic hit, he and his partner created um, the Young Actors Theater Camp which is the most incredible camp for theater loving kids. Um, and Amazing. they do a summer session, they do a winter session. It is incredible. And they are so connected. They get like every Broadway and TV celebrity to come and teach. And I taught there last summer and um, and it was lit remarkable what they have done. Michael has, has taught there. And of course, this summer, there's no camp. And so when this happened, they created a virtual summer camp. And it's un unbelievable. And it's really taken off. And um, I, I'm just thrilled for them, thrilled for them. So Andrea? Yes. We have to make a date. I would love it. And and I have to say, like, with your next guest and for me, too, on my YouTube channel, I never thought I'd be doing yoga classes on YouTube, you know, and at here this you point. Are. When we, when we, yeah, I know. But it r widens your reach, and I'm excited for your guests because it means that people from anywhere can join. What, what is doing. your YouTube channel? It's Andrea Markham Yoga at YouTube, and my book is called Close to Ohm, uh, and it's on Amazon, and I read the audio book if you're into How that. How about that? Thing. How about that? There you go. There you Great go. To see you guys. Yeah, we should say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, like his foot stuck in concrete, and he's like, "I guess you gotta leave me." And people were just feeding this like old pigeon on the street. Just be like, "Ah, oh, yes, here you go." put pressure on yourself to ask questions rather than having answers for things you know if you're ever going to like feel any sort of like burden some quality of like oh i gotta figure this out like don't just like just ask us just ask questions just keep asking questions this class don't feel worried if you accidentally skip something or forget something this is what class is for it's the work
But don't let someone tell you you can't do something. Because you can, and you can learn how to do it, even if it's on your own time. You know, it's easy to want to get approval and validation on, you know, your performance or your, your songs or whatever it is that you're doing. And if you can, if that can just come from within and you can trust and validate yourself. Like how you're acting in episode two directly informs what they're writing for episode five. Yeah. And, and the ways in which they can see your character processing sadness or processing joy. I think is that literally nothing is off the table. Like you can do anything with it because it's your song. Tracksuits are so cute and comfortable, but make sure you wear ones that are colorful or else you'll actually think like you're going to the gym. <laughs> That's hot. Why is that so good? <laughs> it, is, that's that video from like the tiny water, right? Look who it is! Uh, hello! Sean Ryan! Oh my god, it's so good to see you. I have to say, I mean, I've known you and your husband John forever, and I remember when you shared with me this crazy idea that you're gonna start this camp. And now, how many years has it been? This is our 19th summer. Um, it's and our, crazy. Yeah, wow. And it's our first summer. It's crazy. Virtual. And every year we talk about, you know, me coming to teach and it's never worked out timing wise until last summer. And I had the best time. The kids loved working with you so much. Like they love being, one of the things, because we have eight and 18 year olds and everything in between. And one of the things we constantly say to the kids is you're never gonna find a teacher who's gonna pander to your age or talk down to you or be like, that was cute, sweetie. Now make sure and smile. You know, like Michael and Lee are coming in and being like, that was great. You've got a good voice. Now let's add to it. And they love that, you know, kids love to know that there are things that they can do to enhance their skills and then enhance their chances. Because we've got a lot of kids that come to camp, um, you know, who are, the shy kids or the introverts or the geeks of their school and to not just be able to find the teachers and the skills, but also the community, like you saw in that last clip, the LGBTQIA or the Legitibaqua, as I call it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a great chance for them to like meet other kids who are going through similar things, who know all the words to Wicked, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> How has it been being virtual? What is the schedule like? How does it work now that everyone's home? It was definitely a transition. We had been told up until May 18th that um, uh, by the Santa Cruz County Health Board, where our camp normally is held in Santa Cruz, um, we were told that we were going to be fine, that it might be smaller groups, but we could use multiple locations. And then, wow. And then like May 19th. And then it didn't there. happen. Luckily, wow. we've been doing a lot of online programming, you know, from March to May. So what we did is we took our entire schedule and I was actually in a lot of conferences with camp owners who owns like camps where they would do like horseback riding and rock mm -hmm. climbing wall. And I felt so bad for those people because it was like, oh, wait, this doesn't yeah. translate. Mm -hmm. Luckily, everything is here to the camera. So everything translated. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like the kids got these um, camp boxes before it started. And this was camp in a box. So it had everything from like, a mode stick so you could be in class and be like, oh my God, I have a question, all the way down to s'mores kits. So we actually did s'mores on night one and everyone went to their kitchen broiler and with mom and dad's help, of course, and we like did s'mores together. So everything translated, which was, we were super lucky because I know there's a lot of programs where they had to close down to date. Um, the American Camp Association has shown that almost 45% of camps have closed with no hope of reopening, which is wow. super sad because it's programming that we all, you know, parents need as much as the kids need, so. Who are some of the people that leaves, I've got to unmute Lee, is who are some of the people that you have had this summer? Oh my who are gosh. some of your best instructors? Can I just say like getting Michael there, getting Lee there, P.S. when Michael came, he just wanted to be driven around in a golf cart. I don't mean to that. <laughs> that is true. That's actually what happened. We played capture the flag um, by driving Michael in a golf cart to the flag. He got out <laughs> the flag and we drove across the finish line. He's not I kidding. I don't know that that's true. 
that's part of his requirements to provide. I, I'm obsessed with golf carts, but go ahead, go to you, Sean, and get at that camp. It was amazing. Um, but literally, like this summer, we've had the entire cast of Broadway's Mean Girls. We've had, oh, the other day, oh, get this for a masterclass. Lori Metcalf joined us from her kitchen in her cabin in Idaho with this great wide shot. And she didn't want to watch the clips that we were going to show the kids. So she went off camera and she entered in. And I was like, this is like a Broadway show. Like, I would just watch Laurie Metcalf make tea. I don't even care what it is. Me too. I'll talk about oh, it. incredible. And for kids to learn from these people who have these great careers, whether or not they know when they sign into the class, you know, who the, who the artist is. Like, we had Michelle Mullen, who's the head of special events for the Walt Disney Company. And she got to talk to us about, like, she was an assistant stage manager when she was 20, and now she's the the head of you know special event production for Disney. It's like wow. we got to show we got to show young artists that they can have a career. They just need to be able to think outside the box a little bit. You know, it's not right. always graduate school, win the Academy Award. Well, you have created an incredible haven for for kids. Um, what moved me the most when I was there is that. Um, there's every every person you could want to meet is you know embodies your student body you know every every shade every color every gender every i mean it was incredible and all of them are thriving i mean thriving it was amazing i didn't i knew it would be a great experience cuz i know you and john and you don't do anything you know, at 50%. So I knew it would be a great experience, but I was so moved by the kids and, and it, it was incredible. It was Thank incredible. You. Thank you. How yeah. do people find you? What's, what's your website? Um, it's campyatc.com. Okay. Um, and yeah, and we're on all the socials at Camp YATC. YATC. It's, it's a great program. And I'm looking forward to scheduling our little session we're going to do in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yay. Hello. Hello. And aside from camp, Sean Ryan is a brilliant comedian, singer, actor. You could see his website as well. And he does his own act and show all around as well. When the world opens, find him. Hey, we meet a long time ago. hey Sean, didn't we meet a long time ago on a TV show? We met on America's Got Talent when you were my music producer. And I came in and I was like, I'm going to do this. And you're like, no, you're not. Like, <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. And you got me but on my first like you got some fame from that show. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. I mean, it like, was incredible. My grandma would always season. say, like, was it the yeah, first? My, uh, the very first. Yeah. My grandma yeah. would always say, I'm so sorry you lost. And I was like, well, actually, I have an album on uh, Lee Lessig's uh, uh, record label. So we didn't really lose. Didn't and really that lose. was when Regis Philbin was the host. Yes. Yeah. David, um, David, um, you've just dated yourself. Someone's got two. David, um, um, who was the guy that was the um, David Hasselhoff was a judge. Yes, yes, and they had they had brought me on as like the cabaret performer that they were going to purposefully hate. And right Good before Lord. I went on, I saw the producer note on someone's clipboard that said, "You will hate him." And I was like, "Gulp, gulp, double gulp." And I went out and I got no X's. I was the only person that uh, got a perfect score. And I was like, and David Hasselhoff said, "I I was prepared to hate you." And I was like, "Oh, I know." You mean because the producers told you to? Yeah, because someone told you to. Get <laughs> well, Sean, you're a perfect score in my book. Same. Any day. Thank you. Thank you for Thank joining you, us. Sean. Thank you so much. Camp Thank you. Sean. you can still register your kids. They're going all summer long. And um, we'll post the link and everything uh, for you as well. Thank you. I can't wait to watch you do Hey, I don't even have to say that. I Dolores Conchita Figueroa de Rivera Montestuco, Florentino, Caramel, de Fluente. And that's a very nice Jewish name. <laughs> West Side Story established Rivera in the role of Anita. As a Puerto Rican-American who spent her teenage years in New York, it was a part she seemed born to play. I like to be in America, okay, by me in America, everything free in America. Through five decades, she starred in more than 25 musicals. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Happy birthday, baby. Oh, my thank you. You guys, first of all, Lee and Robert, thank you so much for the cookies. Cookies. Oh, I heard about the cookies. Oh, to die for. Happy to birthday. Die for. That's the sweetest thing. So appreciate No, thank you guys for being here, especially I on your birthday. I can't hear you, Robert. Oh, no. Oh. There, there. That's Michael. Can you hear me now? Oh, no. I mean, You're live, live. Well, no. Michael told us it was your birthday. He told okay. us it was your birthday. And so, okay. Oh, what happened to Robert? So Michael told us it was your birthday. And so I I texted Rosie and I said that that Robert and Michael, I wanted to send something, you know, for your birthday to do you like a special cookie or a cupcake or whatever? And I thought for sure she was going to text me back and said, oh, no, they don't eat sugar. But she texted me back like a list. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you like them. <laughs> don't I'm even start with me. Sitting on my sugar, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on my stevia. That, you, mm -hmm. you, guys, you guys look great. Uh, 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 Michael, how's your hand? It, 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 oh, it's oh beautiful, Dar. <laughs> I can do a little jazz hand with one hand. My mic. You gotta make up a better story than that, though. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. You, I, I'm gonna call you later so you can give me a better story. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'll give you, yeah, we'll give you notes. How are so, you doing? How are you two doing in in quarantine? We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> My my notes to my friends are hi. It's it's uh, it's nice to know you're there. Have you killed anybody? Yes. <laughs> you know I, what else? Because everybody's in the same boat. It's craziness. Yeah. It's but, crazy. But we've got two fabulous dogs. I've got two bull mastiffs. Wow. Graziella, Graziella Danielli Mordenti. No, 
Graciela Sofia Daniele Mordenti. That's Graciela Danielle. Yes. Yeah. And my father would stand there. And then there's T Bone. Oh. And Aww. so they, they keep us with 154 pounds of two of them. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So that keeps us busy. And we're doing what everybody else is doing. You guys are doing way more than we are. Um, well, let me just say, you two look so gorgeous. I can't you. take it. I'm not kidding. Both of you. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. I'm just beside well, myself. You know there are two of me. But you know what, Michael? <laughs> I'm so grateful for this thing, little thing here. I you know you are. I, I, I gave birth to her a few years ago. And... Um, and it's just been a joy ever, ever since. And oh, I, that was my debut in West Side Story. And, this oh, her, this is her first they and she woke, she woke up this morning, and everything oh, was Mickey Mouse. I just <laughs> everything was. Oh, uh, I mean, they, my eyes are twirling, Mickey. When <laughs> you, they oh, that made me happy. You were pregnant during West Side yeah. Story. Yeah, that's right. They held an opening. That's right. Six months. Tony, oh. Tony, uh, and I got married, and bam, wham, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, yeah, and then Vicky Beaumont in England, uh, the producer who was producing West Side in, in London, um, said he wanted to do the show, but he wanted to wait <laughs> for me. Yes, and so uh, <laughs> I mean I. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so I had Lisa and Lisa was like four weeks uh, old when, when uh, I, I went to London. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And yeah. And Tony and, and uh, him and yeah. <laughs> my daddy, the jet and the shark. Amazing. But, um, exactly. I was in that show for six months. Wow. She Cheetah, in my, in did the you tell a story once about, the fact that the, the producer or the director said that the, the jets, jets and the sharks could not intermingle. Right. That was the, that was the plan. Yeah. I mean, sorry, uh, a, a friend of mine sent me a whole box of memorabilia today. And oh, yeah, that there was were lots of, of notes from Jerry Robbins oh. and stuff like that. And it's wonderful when you're reminded of the, I mean, I'm, I, I thank God all the time for being blessed with my life. But when you're reminded and you see, and I had yeah. piles of Jerome Robbins notes. And that was really was, cool. So yeah. Jerry, but Jerry, Jerry said, okay, we're going to be over here in this room. I'm going to be with the Jets. You are going to be with Peter Gennaro, uh, all of you sharks. And <laughs> I don't want ever want any of you to talk to each other. Don't have lunch, don't have dinner, just don't talk. So what did I do? I saw Tony Wood again. He was the cutest little guinea you have ever seen in your life. He was so handsome and he was so brilliant that I totally fell in love with him. And so I not only talked to him, I married him and had a baby. So Lisa is the is the I think the only shark jet first the first half the jet first you are you yes. are wow. I ask her, I ask her you know all right what is it is it rice and beans or is it pasta <laughs> and the answer she looks at me right in the eye and says sorry mom it's pasta <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so the Puerto Rican loses again that's right we my mama. I love Aww. it. And then, you know, a lot of people, Lisa, um, for, besides being a Tony nominee, what everyone should know knows, Lisa is the choreo was the choreographer for the Sister Act movies. That's yes. right. I know that. Yes. First one. Amazing. First one. That was a trip and a half. Amazing. So I really wasn't kind of supposed to be there in a way. And Lester Wilson who was originally choreographing it, Lester called me and he's like one of my, you know, the many daddies that I have had to have. And Lester said, girl, please come help me. I'm doing Diana Ross. 
and Luther Vandross at the same time, their concert. So I won't be in for the first couple of days. So I'm like, for you, are you kidding me? He said, it's a movie, it's Disney. And come, just give me a hand for the first couple of days. It'll, more, it'll probably be more vocal. So I'm like, fine. And he just kind of never came back. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd never <laughs> done anything like that, but I had my sweet angel dear friend that I met during this, which is Kathy and Jimmy, and all the nuns, and a lot of them were from Broadway and all this kind of stuff, and they were just rickety rack, sis, boom, bop, you can do it. Yes. <laughs> I did, but I was like, I don't know, but camera, blah. <laughs> so much fun. It was oh a trip. I, yeah. Michael talks about you all the time, and I had never met you until this afternoon. And uh, to prepare for the show, I like fell into like a YouTube hole of you uh, your career. And like the Merv Griffin show that you oh did, Michael Mervin was on, and oh my yeah. God. That was, so, that was another crazy moment where we like, it was, I want to say it was the day of opening night. And Bob Mackey, of course, did those amazing costumes, but I was the only one, except for the, the boa coat that he had, the ostrich coat or whatever it was. Um, I didn't have, my costume was not ready because it my costume was outrageous. So um it was it was like a a, a a storm of events that kept happening. But it was it was incredible. That was a an amazing time and the show was so ahead of itself, like outrageous. And um, I loved doing that show. I loved it. But, but what about you? What? Oh, Michael, Michael, yeah. Michael. I was going to say, what about the time you did a little TV and you did, I mean, like when you were on Welcome Back, Cotter yes. and, and a little Chico yeah. and the Man. Oh, my God. A little <laughs> Freddie Prince. I was trying to find those episodes to send Lee. My name in um, Chico and the Man was Sugar Bridges. <laughs> and I remember thinking, this Sugar can't Bridges. go anywhere from here. Where do we go from Sugar? I, I remember thinking that was just so mortifying. But it was, a, it was a crazy experience because we had just lost Freddie Prince. But Welcome right. Back, Cotter was an amazing experience with the boys and... Oh and it was God, just, yeah. it was like being backstage all the time, you know? So that was fun. And Mikey, you would know all of them. This <laughs> man, this man has saved me so many times. Come we on. Did that. We, we did oh, that. Oh, oh, cute we did that. Um, uh, you, you took me to an audition. And um, I was going to, uh, I was going to sing something else. And then we brought up Melissa Manchester, my idol. Melissa, yeah. if you're watching, I love you. And um, and we decided on don't cry out loud, right? Right. And um, we were rehearsing and rehearsing the song. And I'm going, Michael, that's too high, okay? <laughs> she does 16 changes. <laughs> I'm going to drop dead in the middle of the thing. And he's like, oh, okay, finally. We get to the audition and he's playing and I'm singing. And all of a sudden I'm realizing, why am I so dizzy? He changed the keys on me. He's like, Me? I'm doing, and he was right. He was and right. You perfect, you were perfect, and you were perfect. Oh, but dizzy. Yeah, I was like, you know, it, It's best not to know something. Oh my God. I mean, That's right. Ask me what key do you sing in? Yeah. I go, Give it to me. Yeah. Just give it to me. Because That's right. I would just be like, Limit, limit yourself. <laughs> Can you help it? <laughs> Look at you. I'm going to bite you. Speak, but speaking Not of that. Day, yeah. there, there's men everywhere. Jazz everywhere. Blue. Are we with you? Life everywhere. Joy everywhere. Oh my God, that was great. That was ridiculous. <laughs> you 
you can guys, lie. You guys. Should we say no? You want to? Yes. yes. You can, can lie. lie. See, every place I'm like, you can lie. Then you can live. I can lie. guys are freaking magic i love you so much and maybe you know what i was thinking i was like if i can get them to sing i was wondering if we could have like an expert come on and say maybe say let's see how they did should we say maybe a surprise guest do you want to see how they did lee is there anybody in the waiting room oh uh, yeah. i bet it's celeste oh my god oh, oh my god Hi, honey. Can you hear me? Did we do honey. okay? You did better than okay. And she did, I haven't called you back because I was afraid that I would I would tell mm -hmm. you I was gonna be on here tonight. <laughs> but that was fabulous. That was so you know, good. You know, that that was, was just perfect. I am so glad I didn't know you were there. <laughs> that was just great. I would never have opened my mouth. <laughs> oh no, it was so I perfect. Love you, Celeste. I love you. I love you. Look at how cute you. you are. She's so fabulous. She, Listen, and she she just changed her outfit. More style. Celeste changed her outfit so she would match Cheetah. That's, That's right, dear. What? Little do you know that I have pajamas I on you. my waist down. You but guys people, don't we all? Don't we all? That's if, people, if people don't know and they should, Celeste Simone is the greatest voice teacher probably in this entire country, literally. Well, that's literally. very nice. Thank you. God bless. But that was a treat to hear the both of you sing that. Oh, and good Sheena, Lord. I got to tell you, those vowels were very, very good. <laughs> El Canto expert right there. No. <laughs> That's oh right. Oh my gosh. So no, lovely. And I'll we'll talk to you Celeste. later. We'll dig yeah, later. Yes, I'll be calling you because I need you. <laughs> okay, terrific. And I'm going to join that phone call. I'm going to join that phone call. Lisa, happy, happy birthday. God bless you, sweetheart. Love you. you so be much. Good. Ciao, ciao. Hey, so bye, darling. I love you. Um, I love you Lee too. and Robert, before I have to go, because I'm doing a little live show, you know. Michael is doing an Instagram oh, really? live show at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. And his special American Idol guest is... Katie Stevens. Katie Stevens. But in, oh, before so we go, good. the only thing I care about all day today is my girl, Lisa. So let's all sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lisa. Happy birthday to you. And Cheetah, I love you both thank so much. You, thank baby. you, Michael. Thank you, guys thank so you Robert. Much. And thank you, Lee, for having me. Lisa, I'm calling you both later. And we I will. Love you. I love you. I love you so both. Much, thank you, guys. God bless. Can I just say, wow. can I just say that 
I saw Miss Rivera in her one woman show on Broadway. I saw you in nine on Broadway. I, if you would have told me growing up that I would have Cheetah Rivera on a show and she would sing from Chicago, I would have told you you're out of your mind. The word legend and the word iconic is so overthrown and used. This is the woman who has the record for the most Tony nominations by any actress. You are literally, your body of work is literally beyond inspiring. And it is me and Lee's absolute pleasure to be able to be here with you tonight, both of you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom well, of my We've had heart. such a good time, you guys, really. And, and thank you. You probably hold the record for the um, actress that has missed the least amount of performances, I bet. I hope so. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I intend to keep that. Too. Well, yeah. I, I want to thank you for all you've done for me because you've done uh, so much. It's, and an, honor. it's, it's an honor. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's true. Oh, well, it's thank true. you and God bless. You're going to be busy when when theaters reopen. You're going to be uh -oh. busy. Oh yeah, got to I have to <laughs> I have to stretch this body. <laughs> and I have to I have to quickly shout out our mutual friend. I'm a, I'm a teacher at Peak Peak Performing Arts Center and Lori Michaels is watching. Yes, so hi, we love you, Lori. Lori. I love you. I <laughs> Peak Peak Performing Arts Center. That's it. I love so. that you that you've taught there. That's really cool. She's yeah. fantastic. We're She's crazy fantastic. for Lori. Me she too. Rocks. Yeah. Thank you so much for okay, you guys. joining us. Have a so birthday. Much. Love you. Love you, Cheetah. Love you, Cheetah. Love you. Cheetah. Love you. Take care. You look great. Take care. We'll see you Goodbye. soon. Bye, guys. Lee. Robert. We just hosted a show where Cheetah Rivera and Lisa Mordente sang Chicago live with Michael Orlin playing piano on Lisa Mordente's birthday. What's that about? <laughs> During a coronavirus pandemic. Crazy. Quarantine. Crazy. We just spent the night. What is going on? Crazy. Wow. Crazy, right? Les Simone, uh, my, I called Michael Orlin one day and I said- I remember, and I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but did Celeste like sing like a Don't Tell Mamas or something? This is like in the 80s. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> That's how I first met her. And she has the most beautiful house in Nyack, New York. It is like a night, like it literally is like a dollhouse. And I called Michael and I said, Michael, I need a vocal coach. I'm back singing. And he was like, she's the best vocal coach. And he gave me Celeste's number. And she right. told me, she's, she is, she's amazing. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. tonight was one for the books, right? Highlight reel. Crazy. Video. Every week it just gets better and better. First of all, Thank everyone who's watching. Last week we had over 2,500 viewers or something, which is insane for our Sideshow reunion. All of the episodes are on our YouTube page, um, and we, we link that on Instagram and Facebook and everything else. So thank you all for tuning in. If there are guests that you want us, that you want to see, message one of us and we will do our best. Our entire August is booked. Next week we have the Skivvy. Nick Searley and Lauren Molina and like uh, eight huge Broadway guest yeah, stars. Lady Margarita and a whole bunch of people. Crazy. We have Melissa Manchester coming up. We have Speaking Lisa. Up, Lisa just brought her up. I know. Sure. Laura Bell Bundy coming up uh, for a show. We're excited about that. Um, if you want the to support the show, you can you can donate to our tip jar and. Um, That'll be great. And, and subscribe. And subscribe to our, YouTube. to our YouTube channel. We're trying to bring everybody into one place. Yes, um, wow. I, I'm speechless. I am I am speechless. Michael, thank you. Sean Ryan, thank you. Andrea Markham. Andrea Markham, thank you. And Cheetah Rivera and Lisa Mordente, thank you. Wow. Oh, goodness. That was special. That was special. That was special. I I I was kind of surprised when they said that they would do it. I mean, I knew they kind of would do it because I work with Cheetah, but I was I don't know, and that was thrilling. Thrilling. That was really. I mean, and on on her birthday, so that was really really special. And Michael Orland. He 
He's at every turn. Everyone knows him and everyone asks Michael uh, to do, and he's always there. So it really is. Yeah. He's good one. I think, I know, right? Crazy. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for being here. I the next time you have to sing. I don't That's know who Samantha good. is, but. Samantha is my ex-wife, Lee. Hi, Sam. How could I forget that? Hi, Sam. Oh, that's a story for another show. I like two, basically. <laughs> Hi, Sam. I promise I will sing. <laughs> this week, it's official. Lee's producing my first debut album on LMA. <laughs> so, Sam, I promise I will be singing. <laughs> wow. And uh, so I'm honored because Lee's produced. You've heard all these people talk about the albums that Lee produced for them and put out for them and, and Lee's albums. And I'm so happy to be the newest. Uh, Next. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Have a great night. Go over to YouTube, uh, no, to Instagram Live and find Michael Orland. His show is started one minute ago. And um, wow. You invite us on, you know. I know, right? <laughs> what a night. I'll see you next week. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it's time for Quarantine Cabaret Cocktails with Robert Bannon and Lee Lessig.